there's something you wish readers realized or knew or were to look for when they're opening up your book for the first time, if there was something that you're going, I would love it if a reader took this away or if they read, keep this in mind or something like that. Um, I guess I've never thought of it from that perspective. Like there are fun little things that I know readers don't know that I thought do any pick it up. Like, so my main character is Siobhan O'Sullivan mm -hmm. and it was a while into writing it that I realized her initials are SOS. And, you know, she is always in trouble, so I thought, you know, little things like that were fun. Um, I just want them to fall in love with the characters the way that I did and care about them. Mm -hmm. You know, I want them to, I want them, like you said, I want them to root for them and, you know, want to see them come back again and want to see them, you know, succeed or fail. I mean, they can't always succeed. They're going to have their troubles, you know, there's, there's six of them, so there's going to be problems. <laughs> I am curious if you have a favorite book that you've written or a favorite scene or character. What's funny is that it's it's usually the whatever I'm working on currently is kind of my favorite. Um, it, it's almost like having kids, I guess, even though I don't have kids. But like when you say, oh, who's your favorite kid? Right. Yeah. Like it is really hard. And with every book, you know, it just kind of conjures up like the memory of when I was writing it and the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the first one has so much writing on it because yeah. I put so much into the first one. I didn't want to mess it up. I wanted yeah. to do a really good job. Um, and then, you know, I each one I find things that you know I like about. It. I'm excited about Murdered and Irish Chipper, which comes out in February. They get to go on holiday to a real place um, in Ireland called La Hinch, which is like a. And it's funny because we're here in beautiful San Diego. Um, they get to go to a seaside town and Siobhan is excited because they have um, one of the best chippers around, a yeah. uh, fish and chip shop. So lots of fun things are going to happen in Murder and Irish Chipper. I love how it's, they're go usually this is when the characters go abroad for the first time. Oh, I love how uh, they're still in Ireland, just a different part of Ireland. Exactly. That's, yeah. what, that's amazing. And what's it. great is like a, whole, a lot of my Irish friends, this is where they go. They go yeah. to London, you know, it's just a cute little seaside getaway. I think that's, I, I love that they're still in Ireland because especially, I mean, with this series, the Irish love is so real. For them to come to America, it would have had to have been literally on St. Patrick's Day or something. <laughs> right. they're, they're, it's very hard to make At that work. At least never been out of Ireland, I don't think. <laughs> Got, maybe they've gone to Spain. A lot of people go to Ibiza that live in Ireland. <laughs> I'm trying to keep track because you're with Kensington. Yes. Kensington is a, um, a, that's a kudos unto itself. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's. They're kind of like the powerhouse of cozies. Yeah, now yeah. they're Kensington cozies. I think they rebranded part of their publishing. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that you're a Kensington girl is kind of a big deal too. Thank you. I was going to say you got Kensington, you got Barnes and Noble. Things are going, everything's <laughs> in line. The stars are right there for you. And just keep at something. If you want to do something, just keep at it. Well, it's almost as if it's probably going to come across like she's an overnight success. And you're like, no, it wasn't an overnight success. This this took a while, but I think as soon as the Barnes and Noble announcement is made, people are going to find you and be like, oh, oh, look at this new author. Look at her. This is Because they're not going to realize, oh, this is the first book in this series. This is the other one. But she has all these other backlisted titles over here for you to enjoy. I know that would be that would be the hope. That would, and like when my very first book came out, I remember going into a Barnes and Noble. It was I was living in New York City. It was Union Square. And it was one of these three tiered Barnes and Nobles. And like you walk in, you think your book's going to be right there, you know, like in like the harp is gonna play or something um but it wasn't there and then like it wasn't on the second floor and i found it like on the third floor in the very back corner like one copy like shoved next to a harlequin or something weird like that yeah. and i did sneak it out and put it on the front table but i know it probably only lasted 10 minutes there before a sales clerk was gonna move it i didn't realize at the time that like publishing companies pay to have the books on the front table mm -hmm. um or there's probably other ones they select for it but so it feels to me like coming full circle like 16 years of there were times I wanted to quit because you know working another job and writing and like will I never make money at this like am I okay with that will I keep doing it so I'm just really really glad I kept doing it yeah I mean you stayed with what you're passionate about and I think that's shining through with your stories and that's definitely what propelled you to this point in time where oh my gosh big things are about to happen I am fingers crossed I want this adaptation to happen I love my acorn tv I love my brick box I love my hallmark movies and mysteries we got to get you on one of those channels I, it would be exciting but the thing is like they've had the rights for like three years they mm -hmm. they opted at first during COVID or right before COVID hit and then COVID hit and then that stalled everything um and 
the rights had run out and they re-upped them, which is a good sign. Yeah. But then they run out the second time and then they, that's just when they got the bite from Acorn and Paramount Plus. So yeah, we'll just all send out good vibes. <laughs> And if it doesn't happen with them, maybe eventually with somebody else. I, I was going to say, if the rights run out again, it doesn't mean it's not going to get picked up later on. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, I think it was Aurora Tea Garden. The very first book, Real Murders, was published way, way, way before the Hallmark movie adaptation happened. Yeah. So it's not as if, oh, a book's published, movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It can take some time. So yeah. it's like, even if it does take a little time, like, hopefully it will happen. Because this, I think, translates very well to a visual medium. Yeah, it would be fun. And people always ask me, who do you want to play? And like, I just freeze up because, you know, Siobhan is a younger character and I don't I don't know common Irish actresses that are her age, you know, um, in the beginning anyway, she's only 22 in the first book. Um, and to me, Siobhan is so real. I'm like, what do you mean, who do I want to play? Or like, I want Siobhan to play Siobhan. Uh, so hopefully they'll just find somebody that kind of matches my idea of who she is. She can encapsulate all the characteristics <laughs> but uh, that's that's funny because again this is a character who's real to you so it will be hard to say oh this is a real person and i'm going to try and change a couple of the characteristics over here to make you match because <laughs> siobhan is who she is yeah yeah so i like that you're a little open-minded about okay we'll see where this goes we'll see what happens <laughs> so is there anything else you want readers to know places to find you social media platforms because I do follow her across platforms, y'all. But she should probably tell you what the platforms are. Yes, I am on Facebook, um, Carlene O'Connor Mysteries. It's it's a little bit disappointing because I had a, you know, a pretty big Facebook following, and then I moved and I changed my phone number and I got completely locked out of that account. Oh. So I had to start a brand new one. But I have a Facebook. I have Instagram. Uh, I think those are the main. I have a website, CarleneO'Connor.net. You have a yeah, um, so if you sign up at CarleenOConnor.net, um, I don't over send newsletters, but every time there's a big announcement or a book coming out or a contest or something like that, yeah. I'll announce it there. Um, people also really like the audiobooks, mm -hmm. and they're they're read by an Irish actress, so um, people that want to hear it with the Irish accent and not stumble over pronouncing names and phrases and things like that. Um, the audiobooks have also been a really nice accompaniment, something I, did, I never expected. I did listen to the audiobook, so when it comes to certain titles, I end up having, it literally happened across the board. There's the paperback, then there's the audio, and then there's the ebook, and so that's what's happened with your series and me. Yeah. <laughs> so I do listen to the audiobook, and it, there's something very uh, calming about the narrator. Like You have a wonderful narrator. I think the narrator can make or break the audiobook. Mm -hmm. And you have a very talented one. Yeah, people love Carolyn Lynn. I, as an author, it's nothing uh, yeah. about Carolyn's reading. I, I can't have anybody else's voice, yeah. voice in my head or inflection. or um, So I listened to a little bit of it, and then I couldn't. But I get so many emails saying they love Carolyn. Or the novellas are usually a different narrator just because mm -hmm. they have to do two others that aren't Irish accent. Yeah. So, but the first time a novella came out without Carolyn, I got panicked emails like, is Carolyn not your narrator? And I'm like, she is, she is, she is, don't yep. worry. Um, and fun ones I never expected. Once a woman emailed me and said, oh, my husband and I listened to your audiobooks on date night. And so sweet. two minutes later, the husband emails me. Because my wife just emailed you. What she didn't tell you was that was my idea. I want to credit. <laughs> I love credit. that. Like two seconds later, I can just imagine that conversation. I emailed her. Did you tell her it was me? No! Oh my gosh, I'm gonna email her. That's amazing. I love that you're having these like behind the scenes interactions with readers. That's, uh, I love that. That's historical though. And I never imagined that. Like some people say, oh, we, li you know, our family listens to your audiobooks on long drives and like the whole family. And like that is so cool. Well, that's one of the things about cozy. You never it? pictured any of that. Yeah, yeah, that the whole family can yeah. listen to them. I I'm not surprised though that families are listening to your coziness. It it's just nice to to see and hear that you're reaching them across ages, across, yeah. you know, relationships yeah. and genders. Because sometimes cozies are predominantly female read. So the fact that you're saying the husband was one who yeah. initiated it, I love that. Oh, <laughs> and one really exciting thing that I didn't find out till a year later because nobody let me know and I you know just came across it one day. Um, you know the children's author R.L. Stein. Yeah. He tweeted and he said, I've been reading a series called The Irish Village Mysteries and my favorite so far is Murder in an Irish Pub. 
And like he tweeted that out to all his followers, and there was probably a bump in sales after that, but I didn't even know until a year later that he tweeted that. Oh, that's so but, exciting. Yeah, so, so men too are also reading the book, which I love. Maybe because it's Irish, they that kind of gives them permission to pick up a cozy yeah. mystery. Yeah. Because that's not always the case. I know, I know. Then I thought, oh, it would just be all women and maybe all you know older women. But now I've had young girls reading it, and and I do like it when men you know let me know that they've read it. Not there's more women reading it, but there are men reading it. I mean, also he is a very big deal. Yeah. I think he has one of the master classes with all the other big name celebrities. So he has his master class, so many adaptations. I mean, his name will pop up uh, with the Netflix over here and he's streaming over there. He's a big deal. Well, what I think is cool, sometimes authors ask other authors to do stuff like that. And I never met him, never talked to him. So the fact that he was just on his own reading it shocked me. And then that he was so generous to tweet it out and say, yeah. this is my favorite. Like That's a really generous thing as another author to do. I yeah. mean, shining a spotlight on someone like that, I mean, that's really encouraging because sometimes when it comes to publishing or the world of creatives, it comes across as competitive or a little cutthroat-ish of, oh, only one person can be the number one like, yeah. bestseller. And so I like that there was support and encouragement. Yeah. And also, that was not the first book in your series, so he's been reading it. Or it's well, also yeah. <laughs> something that's really exciting. You're like, wait a second, he kept coming. I know, sometimes I think, is he reading? Is he still reading? <laughs> Did you get past the pub? I don't know. I, you'd be like, hey, can I send you the next book for free? I know, I know. I would like, you know, part of me would like to meet him and thank him. But. Oh my gosh, I would fangirl very, very hard if I met him. <laughs> but he's goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. He is. Yeah, he's goosebumps. I was like, yeah. he's iconic in a way. Yeah. So I just, I like, they'll all remember, like, that's just, like, I just think that was a cool thing for him to do. That's a really cool thing. Yeah. I mean, if I were you, I would print that tweet out and frame it and put it on my wall. Yeah, I, mean, my, I do have it pinned on my Instagram, but and I, it, I don't think it's pinned on the Facebook. But. I would, it, it would be pinned all over my wall. Like, that would be my wallpaper. I would be I so that. excited. I mean, I'm not even kidding. I like, do have a small bathroom, maybe I'll have to see. I mean, I would just hang it up and be like, this is something that happened in my life. Like, that alone is a big achievement. Yeah. I mean, look, you have so much going on where I'm going, she's really got, like, a lot of irons in the fire. Like, what's going on for you? You're going to be busy. Oh, I'm busy, yeah. That's exciting. But, <laughs> but in the best yeah. of ways. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully people who have not already read you will be reading you, and they will be reading both the coziness and a little bit darker of the mystery that's happening. Because I know I'm going to be reading it as soon as I can get my copy. You're an auto buy author for me, by the way. I think it's the Amazon or BookBub notification of, there's a new book coming out for pre-order. I also get the Kensington Arcs most of the time, so I end up buying a second copy. Uh, so clearly I'm, a, I'm an avid. Thank you so much for taking time out of your voucher con to speak with me. I am so honored and I'm so proud and happy for you. Thank you. I'm excited for well, you. I couldn't do it without people like you and readers, so thank all of you. Monte. Yes, thank you for watching and being a part of this cozy conversation. Bye everyone. Bye.